to their team, you manage to get like a 1v1 in an off lane, then it's pretty much the same Reserve thing as being time. mid, in my okay. opinion. You're, yeah. you're pretty much getting the same. So Except the ring control. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a lot to do with what particular lanes Alliances you have to deal with as bat. But I think in most games, he's just strong, like in general. This game looks like he's going to be up against uh, Nyx Assassin, who is going to be annoying, especially once Nyx gets his Blink Dagger uh, as a way to blink into the fire, or even walk into the fire and uh, pop that spike carapace. So I, I feel that, you know, Batrider is going to have Summon's work cut out for him. But we see this matchup quite often, the Nyx versus Batrider. I think Ten there's not often you remaining. see a Batrider without a Nyx being picked. Yeah, as a counter. Yeah, that's Venom that's one that's thing uh, that the new drafting phase has given us, Navi's is the fact that most of the time you would pick. be able to pick those heroes together, you know? Mm -hmm. Just be like, okay, well, we want the Nyx and the Bat just so they can't Nyx our Batrider, which is actually insanely annoying uh, when you try to initiate. Because sometimes you just have to, like, not use Firefly at all and yep. just blink in without using the, the flying vision from Firefly and just hope that you get somebody and don't get caught. So Rubik's pretty good against Batrider as well, an air checker. Yeah. Yeah, Cloud9 love their Earthshaker against yeah. Batrider teams. They always just have like Pilot Guy sitting like four remaining. screens away, and he's like, haha, you can't. Or do my teammates anymore. Also, the Wisp pick. against yeah. the Batrider, where yeah. they would just like relocate immediately next, just That's to break the lasso. Next level stuff. That's a bit harder to execute, but yeah, it is good. Yeah. Like the thing it. about that is that um, because it doesn't matter how m magic immune the Bat is, you don't need to target the Bat at all. Yeah, you target your own hero. Yeah. Which, so, you know, yeah. when they're lasso, they are. They're targetable by your own guys. But yeah, actually, we're going to see an Enigma draft coming out. Ten Hubby seconds really likes remaining. his Enigmas. Uh, and judging from the fact that Five so far the two supports remaining. don't really have a true stun, I'm not counting Centaur uh, from Chen as a stun because, you know, trolls. Or trolls. I, I guess if, you know, Chen's prepared enough. But generally, when the fight breaks out, those stuns are either expended or the creeps die. And that generally will set up a very good black hole for Enigma. Uh, but the way that Puppy plays his Enigma is that he doesn't even black hole much. Like, he goes through 20-something minutes of gameplay and not Black Hole at all. So what he utilizes Enigma is generally for early game pushing, rushing a quick mech, or maybe getting some, you know, utility items for the team. Also, the threat of the Black Hole. You're afraid. The threat, yeah. I like that. Yeah, the, the kind of mind games you can play with people when you have an Enigma on your team. The thing is, it used to be really common to go blink first and just be able to blink Black Hole, but it's a lot more normal now to see people just go straight mech because he's a hero who farms so unbelievably ban. fast that you can have a mech at like 9 or 10 minutes pretty easily. And that's like on top of a soul ring. So not many heroes can offer that. And it allows you to get very, very quick tier 1s. And Alliance right now, their deep push basically consists of a Rubik Fade Bolt and a Bat Rider Firefly. Ten and wards. That's, that's pretty much it. Wards. Most importantly, I mean, where does the damage come from from Alliance? Five seconds remaining. Right now? Venom on Thrill. Accept or Venom, man. Yeah. Accept or Venom? No, but if, it's, if it's Bruno's remaining. Egg Scepter, then it heals people. Ah. It doesn't do any damage. That sounds awful. Five seconds <laughs> remaining. Then you don't get the Egg Scepter. <laughs> but yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, carry Venomancer or quick farming Venomancer. It, it just Alliances hasn't been working. It feels like every bend. time teams are picking it, they just lose. Do we have a stat on that, like carry Venomancer? Aside uh, from I don't just think like it can differentiate between no. item builds. No, okay. What, what about a Rubik Egg Actually, uh, you if you give, give me some minutes, spell, I can check. But you just go like, the, instead of their ten spell. seconds That would be remaining. like game breaking, though. Like, so you had a Bat Rider, and it gives it to you in the alt spot, no, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so pick. instead of having Flaming Lasso, you just have Fade Bolt for an ulti. <laughs> <laughs> like, how awful would that be? I don't know, man. I wouldn't want to play that game. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, Navi, they're going with a lineup that has, I would say, not better pushing potential, but it has enough to threaten Alliance and maybe force some kind of reaction. Because I think one of the worst things that you can do against a Chen is have a lineup that's too passive and doesn't necessarily have any roaming potential. Ten and on top of that, remaining. also can't kill any early towers. Because you want to be able to do one or the other. If you can't roam, Five you want to play greedy remaining. and try to go for a tower or just farm effectively. But if you can't do either of those, then you hope you can roam, you know? But it seems and like Navi can do both, right? Yeah, I mean, they could. I think roaming Nyx is kind of hard because Impale, while it's it's a stun, it's not a great level one stun. It scales like 0.5 seconds per rank. Oh, you're so, talking about roaming before level six? Yeah. Okay. Early game roams. Yeah, because we're assuming, I mean, Puppy's going to jungle, could be Ancient's Windrunner here, which would mean that they could offlane Nyx and Ancient Windrunner at the same time, but that would be like really greedy, spreading themselves kind of thin. This looks like Dendi uh, Windrunner though, no? Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Dendi right. yeah. 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 We seen Five actually uh, Lions had a sand in the other day, so they put I think EGM mid. EGM played one run and he was just like wrecking hard. 
Uh, but I think the, the mid room runner is actually remaining. something that we don't see too often. I, my, the thing I'm going to be looking to is whether then he's going to take his ultimate at 6. Because I feel like oh, that's one of the more forgotten buffs of I'm going to take it this one, after, but you know. But I don't know, that max level power shot and shot is pretty... That's true. You want to max those two spells quick. Okay, I'm going to give you a very bullshit stat. Which is, when Venomancer gets more than 400 GPM... Uh, that's... Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Let's move like on. Like, they win... Does his win they, rate they, go down? Well, no, they, they win 35... 30, 34 out of 40. But, like, that really doesn't mean anything. That like, means it, you it, knock down a lot of towers, and right, your supports exactly. are rightly. So, I mean... I guess I was trying to see if GPM would find some kind of information over... Um, how, how well a Venomancer does in terms of farm, but I mean, it's going to be skewed because if you get lots of gold, you're going to win the game because you're probably owning. So. Yeah, or you've already won the game. Exactly. Just going back Ten to the draft, uh, was was Doom banned out? Yeah. Okay. By alliance, Five I assume. Seconds remaining. Um, nope, Navi. Okay. That's interesting because yeah. it feels like you know that alliance has to rely on one hyper core carry. It's very easy for you to pick up that Doom and say, hey, there goes your carry. Prepare yeah. For in battle. the same sense, Prepare wouldn't you also battle. say that a hyper carry is very susceptible to Navi's lineup in general and being able to get very early towers and kind of restrict your map control? Well, I mean, Morphling, I think, is one of the heroes that is actually good against that. Like, he can be the hyper carry, but he also could counter push, or at least not counter push. But let's say if you leave him alone, he could just push your tower. So you always have to force one person up to your wave to do at least hold him down. Yeah, I was playing Morphling yesterday. I was kind of surprised at how much damage it does when you morph like a lot of agility against towers. You push really quickly with the waveforms. So I, I actually think that this is a, a fairly greedy but a pick, but it's going to work out, I think, for, for Loda. All right. Well, Navi, I kind of think that in terms of just sheer fighting potential, I think they're going to have the advantage for a while. Just because having Enigma, like Eidolon, the pure damage that you're going to have from Lunar Blessing, on top of the fact that they do actually have a few disables, like Maleficent, Shackleshot, Impale, it's enough, I think, to be able to secure kills. And Alliance have, I would say, pretty defensive supports, right? Like you have Rubik and Venomancer. Sure, Venomancer has good lane presence, but right now it appears that they're dodging each other. So I think that they're going to try to play it a little bit greedy, but it's going to be hard for them because unlike Navi's lineup where they have a free jungling Enigma, yeah, it's, it's S4. I think I'm still not muted, which, yeah, is I can hear myself. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, I wanted to do begins. something just before the game starts. Uh, for the people who are watching on the stream, unfortunately, if you're watching on Dota TV, it doesn't work. But if you're watching on the stream, you will see the Dream League HUD in-game. Yeah. Uh, that's still not in the shop. Because it feels like we're just teasing them. Yeah. No, well, we wanted to show it to people because, yeah, we just want to make sure that people know that the HUD is there. We're finished. Valve has to actually publish it and give it to everyone else. But, yeah, we're going to show that. The other thing that you have to know about this is because the kind of changing from day to night is something that has to be set up at the server from Valve. Happen? There is not going to be change from day to night in, in the one that you're seeing in the stream. So we're just day. We're just day. Constant day. Constant day. So, okay. I mean, just for you people to see, because people wanted to see it, and it's really cool, so you have it there. So okay. They did that thing where they pick Batrider early and then give it to Bulldog. I was a bit surprised by that, honestly, because I think that Batrider versus Windrunner is still pretty good for the Batrider. And I guess, I mean, offlane Venomancer doesn't sound that great, but I guess we'll have to find out. Maybe S4 has a big impact here mid. But I think the problem with Venom is that his base damage is pretty low in comparison to what a Windrunner has. And I don't necessarily know if he can even out-harass. Maybe once he starts getting some points in the Poisons thing, he can start trying to trade hits. Or he could just place a ton of wards and maybe try to kill the Tier 1 tower. Every ward he's placed, then he, like, one-shot it. Well, I mean, at level shots. 1, that's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. When you get to, like, level 3 wards, I think, is when they start to get enough health to where they don't just fall over. And you can just start stacking them. And then, the, like, Dendi will have to spam Power Shot, which I think is actually mana efficient than just spamming wards to push the lane in. It's fine. So it's we'll see how like he decides to You think he's just giving them free farm here, but put wards down. I mean, the way I see how this lane's developing is that Dendi's been getting a lot of and if free farm on the wards. He's got like 12 CS. Yeah, so yeah. 12 CS, 3 deny. And the problem with this Venomancer lane is that, yeah, sure, he's going to get level 3 and he's going to get stronger wards. But they don't help him last it that well unless you literally last it with the wards, which I guess S4 will be doing. I see Dendi just completely outlasting and mostly going to be getting the runes. 15 CS. <laughs> now, some of those CS are on wards. Yeah, so exactly, yeah. but it just looks so ridiculous. I think the crazy part is that, I mean, it's like, Havos is at 13, and he doesn't have any words to farm. He's just farming a lane, man. I think.
He denies the other plague ward. Wood player. Top tower but I think even attack. level two wards are quite a bit more durable. Yeah, you need four one. hits instead of two hits to actually kill it, which is yeah. already different enough. You're not going to tank multiple shots uh, and, and just kill the wards. I'm kind of surprised that Denny didn't start with a wand this game. Because even if they assumed it was Venomancer mid, actually, I oh, guess yeah, Morphling. You, you should be, yeah. Yeah, if Morphling went mid, then you wouldn't want to. Actually, he might be getting a kill here. Yeah, Thinking uh, about going up the hill. Too many wards, man. It's scary shit. Yeah, he's got he's got the win run, so. He's grand. You guys use that word more than me now. It's okay. Huh, this is a very interesting you item don't, choice. I don't see your name on it, man. It's an Irish name on it. It's not your word. Uh, S4 has actually gone for a Ring of Aquila first. Trade up, turning it on, just keeping the pressure up. Which, you know, then he's gonna bottle crow and he's gonna spam power shots, so I don't think it's gonna matter too much. He might miss a couple of assets uh, as a result of the armor difference. The thing about Plague Wards is, even if he's spamming power shot, it still yeah. is gonna keep the lane like relatively pushed in, and eventually he's not gonna be able to just sit there and kill them. He's gonna have to back up because he's gonna get to level three wards, and then he's gonna start getting pressured enough to the point where he's like, okay, I actually can't just sit here anymore. And he finally gets his wand, so that's actually going to help quite a bit against uh, S4's ward spam. I think this is a, a bit of an Eric uh, experimental thing by Alliance, because as most teams would tell you recently, you don't get a lot of time to scrim. It's basically you just play matches all day, every yeah. day. So I think they're kind of comfortable in their position. It's like, okay, we're doing very well in the standings. Even if we lose this game, this is still an okay time for us to try something that we necessarily haven't done before and we think might be able to work. Yeah. Uh, we've seen actually Fata do it for Team Dogma. Yeah. Uh, they got thrashed, but it seems like... <laughs> he, no, it's not maybe because of the Veno, it's just teams are trying this out. Yeah, yeah. So... We do see the strength of this uh, level, or sorry, the, the Veno mid. You just keep pushing the lane. Uh, you know, Veno could go for the runes whenever he wants, and with the bottle, you know, he, he's gonna just outreach on a Windrunner who's forced to bottle crowd at this point. When we see Na'Vi play Chen Rubik, they actually roam quite a lot. And maybe Aki's waiting on uh, the correct creeps. That's another thing when you play Chen, you kind of rely on Rubik a bit to attack. get the correct creeps in the jungle. If you get a Dark Troll Summoner, it can be a little bit easier to gank some lanes, but I think even in that scenario, it's very difficult to kill Funic in the off lane, and it's very difficult to kill a Windrunner mid. I think that's kind of the reason why they decided to go with a Windrunner mid, just to make their lanes far less susceptible to the Chen getting that kind of pressure that you really want him to get, to allow like a quick tier one kill or something like that. Because say for instance, you get one or two ganks on Dendi, and then you're able to kill the tier one mid, or you force like the supports to react, and then you allow your off lane bat to get a little bit more out of it, then the dynamic of the game changes pretty greatly. But since he doesn't really have anywhere to go, he has to pretty much use his uh, his Wild Wing Radiant Ripper, or whatever the heck that thing's fortified. called, and just farm the woods with it, which is the best choice that he can make, given the situation. So until he gets Radiant's a better creep, he's kind of stuck doing attack. this. Yeah, meanwhile, Puppy is not stuck doing anything. He's going to be uh, at least pressuring top. The Eidolons has split. They have the Siege unit. First they have the uh, Ring of Bacetus being turned oh. on. The first split's going to get uh, drawn on the bot lane. They get the tier 1 power for there for up top, though. So. I'm really yeah, surprised that a Morphling Rubik lane were able to take down a Nyx. Because... On the Moyes as well, look. Yeah, you should be able to pretty much... Oh, he doesn't have Carapace, that's why. I was going to say, I, I, was, I was only level 2. You yeah. should be able to Carapace the waveform damage, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the burst that would take you down, but I guess he's only level 2, so he doesn't have it. And milling here, Denny being a little bit harassed back. Gale being spammed out. And it's going to be a ward max coming out here from the Venomancer. Yeah. He's even holding on to his... Um, wait, did he put it in stats, or is he no, holding no, on no, to No, 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 he's got, uh, got a... middle tower is under attack. Yeah, he does have a wild point unspent. Yeah, okay. Because you don't have the mana to poison Nova and Gale anyway. Like, no. Dyer's it's way, way too, too much Maybe with wouldn't Aquila, actually. Well, he would be able to do it, but he'd be totally oom. Um. Yeah. yeah. It's poison Nova's 200. And you're spamming mana. wards all day long, yeah. so. Here, I'm a big fan of actually leveling up the Gale, especially if you're playing a solo mid position. Even two levels, and it gives it the killing power. Yeah. Yeah, but the Gale cooldown is actually longer than Windrun, and every time you get Gale, you can just Windrun. And Funnick's going to be dropping quite low again here. And bottom lane, but this time he will be able to uh, scuttle those little bug legs away. It's not gonna <laughs> die. It's not gonna get squished. He has like the Dagon looks so ridiculous on his head. It does it really does? It's like one of those um, what are those really scary fish called that have those like lamps on their head that they oh, use to like the really about. deep water ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things are terrifying. They're like prehistoric fish. <laughs> Jeez. 
That's why I stopped watching like Discovery Channel, man. I had like nightmares about those fish. Dude, like, nature is scary as shit. I'm it gonna really say is. that out there. <laughs> so is going inside. Nature is scary. Let me yeah. 2014. The splishy splashing going on down here. Yeah, Alliance finally decided that they want to try to go for this offlane tower. And Navi don't really have any reaction to it. They've already killed Alliance's offlane Dyer's tier one, so I think this is kind of expected. Fallen. But Alliance do have first blood to their name. I'd say the game is relatively even right now. Uh, maybe outside of the fact that Dendi is still winning mid. I think some of the creeps are obviously just ward kills. Mm -hmm. But the longer this goes on, it's going to be harder and harder for Dendi to just hold S4 at bay. Because power shot spam is only going to be able to hit the creeps. You're not going to be able to stop the ward spam. Yep. And no one is really coming to gank S4, and it's really hard to do that with Enigma, who doesn't have a blink. I mean, to me, impressive is Dendi being able to keep up with CS, despite the fact that the tower has been hitting his creep wave for such a long time now. Yeah, but uh, I mean he has face boots as yeah. well. Good animation, face boots, a power shot, the constant bottle crowing. See, probably going for mana boots here. I think like okay, they want to like go together and push towers. Yeah. But they go middle and there's this massive wall of wards. You're not going to be able to push at all. It's actually pretty cool from the land. Like they pretty much secure that tower is not taking any damage at all. So we're thinking Alliance maybe just want to try to to delay a bit to make sure Bulldog gets his blink, maybe get Loda. Maybe a Lincoln's or something. Maybe he just goes straight E-Blade in this situation. Although I would say that Lincoln's is pretty strong against teams that have so many single target abilities that I think are all worthy of blocking. Like even Lucent Beam is nice to block. It's a 300 damage nuke that you just wouldn't take otherwise. Poison mana Touch? burn, yeah, mana burn crushes Morphling oh. really hard later in the game because mana burning is essentially ruining your survivability, right? It's yeah. kind of like being a Medusa because you can't morph stats if you don't have mana, so. And I think just having regen to be able to stay, stay out oh, is you know, very underrated. Yeah. He's going to get a Gale on Puppy, but I think he is definitely going to be going down here. Shackle's going to land hard to follow it up. Even the Spike Black Hole, Hand of God comes out. EGM actually walks in and they counter initiate. Here comes Loda with a waveform. They're going to be able to get the kill on Puppy. Can they get Curl? He does have a point in the Grave if he wants to try to use it. I think he could just Grave TP if he has to. There's the Grave, just going to casually walk out. There is a Replicate, but it gets stunned along with Loda and EGM. And the rest of Navi is going to be able to retreat. Yeah, that's a, a lot of commitment trying to defend S4. Maybe they thought they could transition off to a push, but they're not going to get anything beyond that first Enigma kill. Meanwhile, if you look at the jungle, it's going to be Havolt's free farming. He didn't have to join the fight. It's going to be a quick Yasha build as well as a Morbid Mask. So that's interesting. Normally upgrade it to a um, Helm just to get your jungle stack. They've Sorry. already warded the they jungle. They did. They already did, yeah. Ancient. Alliance on top of it. Um, I actually like the fact that he's going a bit greedy here because if he saw that Loda went for a Midas, actually might have to hold on fresh blink on Bulldog here. They're looking for Dendi, but they're not going to get him. So as far as the Yasha Morbid Mask build, typically you would say, oh yeah, it would be much better to buy a BKB. But if they don't plan on pushing right away, there's not really a whole lot of point to buying it unless they think that Alliance are going to start going hyper aggressive, which Bulldog is their only initiation here. He's going to find initiation right here in mid. Dendi is going to get caught out by the lasso. Teleport reaction coming in. It's going to be Curl. Can he get the grave up in time? He gets the heal and the grave. Dendi's still standing strong for the time being, but I don't think it's going to be for much longer. Oh, he's getting denied. denied. Comes Puppy out from denies Puppy. him with the creeps. What a player. And here comes the boss. Wait, did, did Puppy deny or? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he had creeps there, man. I see. Creep deny. Go away. Um, that was sick. A couple of mid kills traded for here and there. Uh, those army of wards just constantly being annoying. Uh, the glaive, by the way, they don't bounce uh, to the other wards, I don't think. They bounce off of them, though. They acted like structures, and don't they bounce between structures? Oh, I guess they just don't target them with low priority, I suppose. I guess, I, or I guess you don't even control how the. I, I don't think anybody all knows guessing? how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are all guessing. Like, we, we don't actually have any idea. I mean, there's so many nuances in the game. It's like, who actually just knows off the top of their head? It's like, oh, yeah, they totally bounced the Plague Wards. I mean, I would think that they would. They should. So weird the way we've all played so much Dota, and we still don't understand. Shut away! We're all still ass. Yeah, we're exactly. Just like, it's like, we're so bad. That's why it's a great game, man. Yeah, there's always something What's to learn. that game where they said, like, a minute to learn, a lifetime to master? Although this Chess? game's, like, a really long time to learn. And then chess like an take... even longer time to master. Yeah. yeah chess, chess is like that, right? That's chess doesn't take a minute. Radiant's really nice entry placement here by Ake. Okay. Replicate going to be uh, popped as well. Chess is so easy. It'll take more the than a minute to learn chess. The bishop going diagonal, the horse going in elf shape. Just stick to checkers, man. I'm and too... The castle goes up and down. I'm too sick. <laughs> the, the castle, castle goes, goes up and down. <laughs> it's called a rook, man. Different. Two minutes to learn. 
Doesn't even know the name. Literally of learned it in 30 seconds. I found out that the, apparently by by your pawns going across is OP. Yeah, you can get whatever piece you want. It's like just a lot final. Try their hardest. So Bulldog got like a 10 minute blink dagger on the yeah. offlane against, against like Dazzle Luna. This is like really impressive, no? Well, Dazzle Luna doesn't have a whole lot of kill potential on him, so he can... Like, Batrider offlane when you're Radiant, you can go to the side camp and you can mess with it with Firefly, you can mess with poles. So in some cases, it might just be better for him to not even ward the camp at all because he can contest things so easily. Because if Luna's in lane and Kuro is pulling, then okay, what's a solo Dazzle gonna do to you when you're Firefly, you know? Yeah, that's I mean, kind of exactly what he did. He did yeah. that, I think, three or four times, in fact. So I think that given the fact that he was able to get so much out of his offlane, it puts Alliance in a spot where they can actually take fights assuming Na'Vi want to be applying pressure. So I think that both teams are actually pretty even still. Alliance have, um, I would say, a kill lead because there was one kill that was denied in mid when Dendi got created, but it's still like exceptionally close. Yeah, they got the first blood as well. Yeah. So I think the thing that maybe Na'Vi is just relying, relying on is saying, hey, they have a Venom solo mid. That, that hero just doesn't really scale that well, unless we're talking about him being able to get into like Ultra late game utility item, like Acceptor hexes and pipes for the team. But uh, looks like he's gonna go for a blink dagger. Huh. That's what I hope this is a Midas instead. Well, I don't necessarily hate blink to be honest, because if an engagement happens, Navi are the kind of a lineup that are gonna typically be clumped up, right? I mean, that's kind of a walk into people and push all puppy. He's living life on the edge, he just doesn't know it. They're even going for Roshan right now. Havolus is only at about 50% life. There's a smoke on the high ground. Alliance looking to try to get a better position, but I think the Firefly is going to be wearing off soon. I mean, as long as Puppy doesn't get killed from the get-go, he's got the mech, and that's why they can play as aggressive as they're doing right now. Unfortunately, sensing that a lot of people is missing, that's where the Venomancer co mid comes in. They've been constantly on the other side of the river, and that tier 1 is uh, pressure so much. The Radiant tier 1's been up, so if a long fight breaks out, Alliance could be reviving and TPing back to the tier 1 to contest this Roshan. That baby got sent up. Look at that shadow. This is one of the benefits, though, to going the build that Havos went for is normally if you rush for a BKB, your damage isn't going to be as high as it would be right now. Like, he would actually have BKB at this point in the game if he didn't go for the Yasha and the uh, the Morbid Mask, but just doing the extra attack. damage with the item build that he did allows them to be able to kill this faster, which means that Loda can't get to Tier 2, and obviously their Tier 1 is going to be a little bit fresher, but they're going to get Roshan for free. Yeah. No contention at all from Alliance. And having an Aegis on a hero like Luna, who does this much damage this early, is huge. Yeah, I think this is where having Windrunner Dyer's on your team is just so is good. And I think attack. some of the forgotten factor, where we saw Windrunner all the time, just having Power Shot, being able to scout so frequently, uh, it's a decent nuke at this stage of the game. We saw Batrider Dyer's trying to go in, uh, got attack. harassed down to half HP. Normally, you can't actually do that early Roshan against a Batrider who has a blink already. Uh, yeah. But they are able to just clean it up. S4 also, thanks to the mech. Going for a 4 stuff instead of a blink dagger the kind of get in there item right yeah and or, i think he kind of needs out. the mana too or, i mean venomancer uh, has i mean 32 wins not that bad but i mean he's a banana right he's he not needs that it for smart. his ult yeah. he needs it for his ult that yeah. ult costs a ton i think it's mostly also for the shackle shot like if somebody gets shackled to a creep or something you, you get them out of there and since Navi really only have like two disables, if you're able to force staff one of the disables, then it makes it pretty difficult to yeah. actually follow it up. Well, I guess technically they have three, but... Can you force people below the black hole? You can, can no, you? no, they don't move. Like Chronosphere. Dyer's middle tower used to be able to force staff people in Chrono. They yeah. changed it. It was a bit silly, though, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> hey, here's it's like I stopped ultimate. time, but you can still move. It's like, that doesn't make any sense. But you could pick them up and move them. Radiance bottom could. tower. Yeah, is you under could attack. lift somebody that's in the crown Or if you had rope tied on them, you could pull them. Although I have seen people get flame break out of crown spheres before. Are fortified. Or and black holes too, actually. I'm pretty sure you can do that. Dyer's All right, they're gonna get this tier one tower. Here comes multiple TPs. It's nice gonna be a shot. Nyx assassin. The stomp's gonna be their tower to die. Shackle shot. They're gonna get a centaur kill, I guess. There's a nice attempt. I oh, think he was centaur. trying to go for a. Uh, for S4 right there, but literally for the past 15 minutes, there's ward on this side of the ramp. I think the thing I've been noticing is Navi are kind of clumping up mid, and I like so only have two players there yep. most of the time. And they had a morphing that's just constantly going everywhere, yeah, and I think exactly. that's the hyper carry that that can take advantage of this game state. Like he pushes so fast by himself, and it's so hard to just gank him. 
because he has Replicate, because he has Strength Morph, and that Lincoln's fair, it's gonna be up very, very soon. So, minus Lincoln before 20 minutes, that's pretty good. And let's not also forget, like you guys brought it up just a second ago, but the fact that S4 is able to pretty much just sit in his lane and do whatever he wants and consistently keep pressure on mid means that Navi can never actually go up to the tower to kill it unless S4 is already dead. Yeah. Because the plague wards need to be down pretty much to safely be able to say, okay, well, we're going to mount a five-man push, take like two minutes to kill all these stupid wards, and then we can push. Yeah. But by then, it's going to be plenty of time attack. for lines to be able to react even without the use of TPs because Navi don't have any guaranteed initiation. They don't have a blank hero right now. Nope. I mean, Enigma doesn't have a blank, Kuro doesn't have a blank, although Dyer's I'm sure he's probably going for one. He just doesn't have it yet. So they don't have any guaranteed method of initiation to say, okay, we're starting the fight right now on our terms. Yeah, Funnick gets very close to his blank, 1,650. EGM is closer, though. He's only like a 200 gold away. That's true. Uh, those towers definitely help out. Obviously, Navi did get that Roshan, so that's pretty big for them. I understand where EGM gets all this money. What happened was when they were... When uh, Navi were doing Roche, EGM was just sitting top farming. Well, there's that too, and EGM never even know where the wards is in his shop, so... No, well, it's hard to find them when Blink Dagger's on the right. The there's a freaking the search <laughs> bar, like, on the, surf, in the yeah, shop. Yeah, but you don't spell Observer Ward with B-L-I-N-K, I mean... Yeah, or, I don't know. or Midas, they're kind of different. What if he goes Midas? Mid lane here, it's gonna be... Castle onto a boast, he's got the Aegis, but if he drag him into the tier 1 tower, well... He's gonna be right there. A centaur stop waiting. Oh, he's coming. They have a telekinesis lift as well. Attack. They do lift them up. No, they lift Radiant's the wrong one. Here comes tower. Puppy. He's I think Nick Damage will be enough. The mech gets activated. They got the grave as well. So Hobos will barely survive. No, no. no. some being stolen here by EGM. Dyer's that's gonna give him the blink. 40 attack. seconds death for Luna. And that's gonna give him the push that they need. Me on the top lane here. If you look at Loda, got a tier one. Last it onto his name. Man, Alliance. That cast point on Rubik Lucent Beam actually just got him killed. Ali, though, multiple TPs are coming in. They're gonna get the game on Funnick. He's gonna go in Viz. Please don't see me. And he's gonna get the sun up. No TP, though. Nice flame break. Tier 1 tower is also gonna get denied. Radiance bottom Alliance tower is playing really well. Denied. Brutal efficiency, man. Like, everywhere they go, they're able to get something. And I think this is just... The difference between having a hero who can actually force a fight and having a team who kind of has to walk up to a tower. Yep. tower. I mean, the weaknesses of those attack. types of lineups is either other lineups that are tanky or a lineup that can initiate in you before you can get there. Right, and that's pretty yeah. much exactly what happened. I will say that Havost was a bit optimistic with his positioning because he didn't have a tier one. Like, he didn't have anyone even near him when he got Lasso initiated on mid, so. Hope he was at the large camp farming. Like, yeah. he was the closest. Actually, I think Andy brought up a great point about the power of initiation. I, I think that's also why we don't see offlane winner too much. Like, if you look at the current Dyer's list of common uh, offlane heroes, Clockwork, Nyx Assassin, Centaur, Bat Rider, one common theme is that they all initiate really, really well. Nyx as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so where, where does Windrunner fit in this? She really doesn't. Shackle Shot, yeah, you can initiate a teamfight if you do hit it, but it's just so unreliable. So, we see the power of Bat and, and you know, Windrunner as a traditional offlane is not keeping up. Speaking of the winner, she is farming extremely well though. Gonna be going towards that Hex. But, uh, you know, Hex... Force Staff on the other side, I wanna say. Force Staff sent back. There's, there's ways to deal with the Hex. I'm a bit worried right now for Navi. Havos is still farming, like, pretty well. But Loda's actually starting to pull ahead now, because that one death obviously hurt him. The longer that Loda's able to farm because he has a Midas, and Havos doesn't, the gap is only going to get bigger. Yep. Even though you could say with Glaives that, sure, he probably kills creeps a little bit faster. But I think in terms of, like, a really, really late game, I would probably rather have a Morphling than a Luna carry, just because the Morphling brings that if I go Ethereal Blade, I can instantly kill a hero and yep. force a 4v5 engagement. I think that's a little bit stronger than being able to just say, if I get to freely auto attack for like five or six seconds, I could win us a fight. Yeah. I also think that, uh, you know, Loda's been farming much better because his team allows him to do so. Oh, middle. S4, he's gonna get stunned. Immediate force staff. He's gonna get force staffed out as well. And the mech, he's still gonna be alive. The hand of God comes out from Ake, and he gets sent home. 
Talk about, about freaking support, man. And they want to fight this because Ishiyam's right back. He's got the Blink Dagger as well. The Slow's going to come back in the Blasto onto Havul's immediate weave as well as Grape onto him. He's going to be very slow. Four step into the enemy team. Not sure if that's a miscue one. Flame Break's going to clean him out. Kuroki being caught out on the side. A couple more Napalm is going to slow him down. They have Blink and Four Staff still up. Impale hitting on a lot. And I think Kuroki's going to survive. No, Loda comes in and he's going to clean up. That Grape Line Line. EGM's on the other side of him. EGM slowly demonic conversion. Blink four here from Ammo Bulldog. Right now, Nami's getting overran. First two match Shackle shot attack. of the game, but there's just no follow up. Oh. Staff's just doing absolute work on the side of Alliance. Like, four staff immediately as soon as they went in, then another four staff, and it's like, what do we do at that point? Because we just tried to go, and we don't have any way of catching you. Like, if, if Puppy had a blink, maybe? They would have been able to just go for a black hole. I'm actually surprised they didn't, because I think he would have been able to catch two where he was. Maybe not, maybe not two. EGM was standing like really far away, looking at basically. Yeah. Puppy saying like, "Go on, black hole, like dare you." But I think he would have stolen it like instantly. Yeah, the black hole being stolen is a danger. The flame break easily canceling is another one. So, as well, you don't want to know where that morphling is. Uh, that does strike from long range. That's an easy cancel as well. Yeah. But back to your point about uh, the Luna being a better carry, I think the Luna, sorry, the Morphling being a better carry. I think the, the Luna has to constantly worry about Batrider ganking him, just back to the point of initiation, whereas the Morphling has Lincoln's fair, so he's not worried about anything at all. So I feel that Morphling could just farm a lot more relentlessly. As a Hilarious. EGM is just chilling in the jungle with the mana conversion farming. Dyer's top tower he's like, right, I'm an Igman, lads. He's going for Agonims as well. If he, he gets a. Uh, Filthy rich yeah. for a support player, man. He actually has like comparable farm to the cores on Navi, which is a little silly. He has 62 CS. Dyer's like top a, a hard is support. Under attack. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't Radiant's say hard support because EGM actually never plays attack. hard support. Light support. Yeah. Meanwhile, S4 support. is just gonna yeah. get a tier two free top. Nobody defends. This. I mean, really, what are they gonna do? Dyer's they don't have any way of fallen. initiating on him unless Phonix's there. He has Agonims now if he chooses to I mean, yeah. the thing is, Phonix's uh, effectiveness has not been felt at all this game. Radiant structure yeah, I mean, Blood haven't set up any gank. He's got the Blink, but the Blink hasn't done much for him. That's the problem, though, is that Nyx is a hero who... I think he's actually better defensively than he is aggressively, because he's countered by sentries, like, really hard. Mm -hmm. You just place a sentry whenever you push a tower, and unless he has a Blink that then he's not initiating, right? And as an offlaner, realistically, you're not gonna have your blink very quickly, especially since he's the one who got first blooded. So he's already behind. Getting a blink even before the 20 minute mark, I'd say is pretty impressive considering the start that he had. Yep. But now, if you blink in with just an impale and you can't get your vendetta hit off, then you don't have any damage. And Havos went for Manta and BKB, which means that he doesn't necessarily right click that hard. So against a team with a, with a Morphling, a mech and a Chen heal, even if they get black hold, I don't really think they're going to be able to kill the Morphling. Yeah, and also his under level is just not helping him out. At this point in the game, you want to have a very high rank mana burn in case when they're sieging your base, you can at least poke out, key on mana burning one of the alliance heroes and say, hey, back off. But uh, he had to level up Spike Therapist. Four staffs kind of counter Nyx as well. Like, counter most heroes, but Nyx especially, because you can't Vendetta then stone. He has to like yeah. and blink stone, and it's pretty hard. Yeah, it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do now, especially if you're trying to go for like a really long range stun yeah. because there's like a travel time on it, so you actually have time to just move. But yeah, not a great spot. Dendi's going to have his Hex kind of soon. I wouldn't be surprised to see him actually go Blink just so they have a hero who has like guaranteed, okay, bam, we start the fight like right now and we can just Hex a hero and maybe try to get a kill. And because of the fact that they have um, Kuro and they have a max rank Shallow Grave, they can actually use it to on whatever Blink initiator they want. Right, so they can keep him alive for at least the foreseeable future in the engagement. But I still gotta hand it to Alliance, man. I was like, I was really wondering what the Venomancer mid was supposed to do, but I mean, just keeping the tier one alive is what it's supposed to do, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the t like, it's still standing is just an ode to the fact that Navi could never mount a push. He's got that acceptor, so once he gets to level 16, we're looking at an ultimate that does something in the rank of like over 1500. Billion. Billion, about that. In At least. AOE. Over 15 trillion damage. 
you're in a 5v5 fight and you're uh, Dendi, who do you hex? Who's like the main, before anyone casts any spells, who's the main? I think you would uh, hex S4 or you would hex Bulldog. I mean, the thing is, it would be nice to get the Chen too. Shackle's gonna land on Bulldog, but no one's even close to being able to follow that up. But there's actually so many good targets. Yeah, that's what like I EGM is actually a hex target too. Like Rubik, Venomancer, and Bat. They're and the Chen, actually. Like, so hard. It really depends. If S4 gets his ult off, don't hex him. If the Chen mechs and hands of God, or hand of gods, don't don't hex him. And then I guess if the Bat Rider lassos, don't hex him. Well, no, I, I think the best uh, scenario for them is the Bat blinks in and lassos somebody, and you hex him before he turns around four staff. Like if you have that, that's a pretty reasonable. Yeah, but they have another four staff, that's and true. he can turn around and hex. So, I mean, it's not ideal, but. I think hexing for preventative measures is only good if you have a, a method of blink initiation. So I think we're maybe like theory crafting a bit too soon about it because we don't know if he's going blink or not. I think that's like the point where you could start saying, okay, which one should hex? Yeah, right right now, uh, Enigma close to his blink, or sorry, his BKB, which is going to be a big deal because there is only one spell to cancel it. I guess two because I guess Rubik could steal the black hole and black hole him to cancel the black hole. That would be next level. I mean, it's actually pretty easy to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's just because no, you gotta blink, yeah. yeah. And nearly ags. When he has ags, I don't know. But I mean, really, how often do you see that? Like, how often Dyer's do you see a black hole get stolen and attack. use a black hole to cancel the other guy's black hole? I mean, it, 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 EGM's probably gonna Dyer's do this game. Oh, here comes initiation. Oh, I'm not sure of the panic BKB, because. Maybe he meant to Manta? Well, the thing is, even. He, he could still get Lasso, but he dies much slower when he has BKB on. So maybe it's more like, hey, I'm going to BKB so my team gets here. But that's going to give 60 seconds for uh, Radiant's for, top Roshan, for, for Lions attack. to do what they want to do. And trying to engage into a Venomancer around the pit. Without BKB. With an Ags Yeah, as well. that ulti is going to hurt. Coming in. Oh, Havos, he's going into the low ground. He's actually leading the charge. EGM standing on the high ground with Blink. He's going to get spotted, though. Blink gets canceled. The most wanted to try to clip, but he can't. Black Hole actually going to only hit on motor right now. He's just so unbelievably tanky, just spamming that convert strength. Eventually, we are going to see a lasso on Havos. He gets pulled up to the high ground by Bulldog, and now he's stuck. He has no way to help his team. Puppy, though, going to be dropping the test of faith from Ake. There's an adaptive strike. Actually puts Kuro on the high ground. And he's actually stuck. He can't can't go anywhere. There's going to be one TP out. Actually, Dendi drops instead. Havos still just sitting up here going, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And Eclipse gets stolen as well by EGM. Havos actually kills Bulldog in the meantime. There's an the Ethereal Blade. Okay, as four picks up the double kill. Havos got stuck on that cliff for literally like 10 seconds and EGM stood next to him. He did not cast a Lucent Beam. And as a result, EGM stole a level three Eclipse. Maybe he thought he could TP away. There was no TP on him. Okay. And his Manta cooldown, last time I checked, was 40 seconds. So he just literally stood there and thought about Roshan life. And did not think about using a Lucent Beam. That felt so forced. Like, Na'Vi were like, okay, we need to fight now. Well, it's kind of gotten to that point, hasn't yeah. it? Because if you're Na'Vi, the Morphling is out farming your Luna. Like, not by a CS, by a huge margin. But again, he's had Midas for, what, 25 minutes? And they've had map control for quite a while. They've taken all your safe lane towers. They've taken the mid towers and the bottom towers. You don't have anything left standing on the map. They still have a tier one middle lane. You have pretty much all the map control in the world right now. You have a blink initiator who is pretty, I would say, in terms of execution, he's much easier to blink initiate than a Nyx is. Yeah. Right? And you have Mask of Madness 4 staff on him as well. So you can pull people even farther out of his position. And that's pretty much what he did to Havos during that fight. So... Props to Bulldog for the lasso. That was like really nicely done. So my question is, if you sell Black Hole with Acceptor BKB, or sorry, with Acceptor on Rubik, do you get the Midnight Pulse? Yep. Yeah, you, you do. do. Do you get Enigma's current rank of Midnight Pulse? That works, okay. Ridiculous if you get this. Yeah, yeah with the Luna, gonna get Luna, Luna Eclipse ulti. He's, he's gonna get it. What do we? Oh it increases God. the number of times he can be hit by the beams yeah. as well. Uh oh, Poppy, he's gonna have to force his pop his BKB. Got the grave, man. He's he's doing okay. Loda just is out for blood though. He does not care. He's gonna have to strike soon. There's gonna be an eclipse popped as well. It's actually the eclipse coming out from EGM. He even steals and pale and hits on two. What a player, EGM! <laughs> just stealing all the right spells at the right time, and Funnick and Kuro both just die. And he's 13 to 2, man. Igs now as well. This is like super Rubik time. This is like. 
it's impressive, honestly. Like, people were saying, yeah, Alliance looked a little bit shaky. Dyer's it doesn't look that shaky to me, man. Attack. Ivana did a solid, Dyer's like, two, two deaths. On, on, what is it denied? I, don't know, but I would say that their laning was a bit unconventional, but it did what it was supposed to do. It bought time for Loda. There was pretty much no pressure on him the whole game. Oh, we're gonna Dyer's see a hex. He's gonna get forced out of the base, though. Four staffs, yeah, yeah they, they get the tier three. And there's no real skin off their nose. They're not gonna lose anything for it. Oh. GM's actually gonna throw out a stun on the Havos, but... I don't think Lasso just yet, they're still waiting on Bulldog. Yeah, they're waiting for the shotgun cooldown as well. It's gonna be up in five seconds. Like, if you get shot down, proceed to have a 5v4. Even if you don't kill them. Here comes With the Veil. The Veil shotgun. All four sap into an axe after all. Here comes the BKB from Havos. The Weave hits on everybody. I think it's gonna be retreat time. The Bueno Mancer though, doing the deep over time. Where's the black hole? There is no black hole. The Lasso goes on Puppy. A Puppy is getting right click down. Grave into a four sap back into the base. And here comes Ammo Bulldog. It's gonna kill you in the base. <laughs> Yeah, it's not looking good. Actually, Puppy's gonna survive thanks to the Urn Shackle Shack coming out from a far as well. But there's just no hope because now on the other side of the base, a line's coming in. Yeah, he's gonna Black Hole. Just... Yeah, he got Black Hole. Got but Black Hole they... stolen? Yeah. All right. They're not doing a whole lot of damage. Loda doesn't even die. Oh, he's got the Black Hole on board. <laughs> it gets cancelled by a Shackle and a triple stun coming out from Funic. Just call it a Ravage, man. Call it what it is. Lotus just converting agility because maybe he thinks he's, he's gonna out of die. Mana. He's out of but everything. He's got Aegis. He's got Aegis. Yeah, he's he's fine. Oh, what a snipe. But yeah, they're gonna pop the Aegis. EGM went for the huge play there. Then he had enough mana for the shackle though. They're gonna get another one. Lotus gonna get hexed after the fact. Oh no, Havos. Oh, great. That's fine. That's fine. I think, I think he's still dead no matter what though. Uh, survive through the Manta, deny oh, attack. Deny. What a player coming out for Navi first. The puppy deny, now the Dendi deny. Manta Sal is gonna, well, the Lincoln's gonna block it. Here comes a Dyer's GG. Dyer's middle Rax. barracks are under attack. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. I gotta say, Alliance Radiance looked to be... Tower is under attack. Like, the communication Alliance was really victory. good. Like, every single time they went Dyer's for any engagement, especially when they picked off attack. the most after Navi got the Roshan, that, I think, is when the game really took a bad turn for Na'Vi, because that Aegis was supposed to give them at least, like, a tier one, you know? Mm -hmm. But it didn't give them anything. It was just, Havos died for free, and then Alliance continued just having a total free-farmed Morphling, and we're just able to do...